We're back here at the NFL Scouting Combine, downtown Indianapolis. Lair Overton, I'm Matt Taylor. It's our pleasure now to be with the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. Frank Reich is with us on Radio Row. Coach, first off, appreciate the time. What has the Combine been like? Describe a normal day for you now that the Combine is back intact after your year hiatus, if you will. Yeah, it's been great. You know, just being able to walk through, see a lot of old faces, uh, you know, coaches and that you've coached with or just know throughout the league. But really the days, Matt, it started with being a new member of the competition committee the last three days, you know, been meetings all day with that and then interviewing uh, players, you know, college players tonight. So it's been a good start so far. Coach, of the last two years that we navigated unprecedented times in how we approached the off season, how refreshing is it to get back to being in person? What are things that maybe you took cues on, you learned from doing the way that you had you know, these past two years, how you had to adapt that have impacted how you're handling this year and how you guys might treat this process moving forward. Yeah, no, it, you're right, Lara. We, we have been able to use what we've learned with some of the Zoom stuff, but you just can't replace the in-person. So what some of the virtual stuff does, you know, you can supplement that, but there's nothing like getting face to face. So, you know, the goal is let's take advantage of that you know, get as much face-to-face -face as we can with as many guys. When you have a guy for 15 minutes, it's, you know, it's not a long time, and you're trying to get as much intel as possible. What are you looking for? How do you, how do you gauge a guy in only 15 minutes? Yeah, we, we prepare, the coaches prepare very hard. We have a very specific game plan for those interviews. And, right, these guys are so well prepared. You know, they're agents, and everybody prepares them for a lot of things. So we try to do things that are unscripted, you know, that they can't prepare for you know show them things show them football stuff that there's no way that they saw show them some of our plays show them some of their plays and get them to start start talking about that get them on the board ask them certain questions that you know that maybe they're not anticipating so to quiz them um, it, it's good I mean you, you got to be very concise and you got to have a good plan can you tell when guys are off their game a little bit yeah, but it's fun to see that, you know. Yeah. And can they can they recover? You know, I mean, it's like we all get off our game for a second, and that can you recover? Right. And it, it, so it's it's good to see. Coach, through Colts Productions with the next pick, we have that perspective of being able to go through the process with the scouts, with Chris and with Ed. And the scouts do a lot of those interviews with the guys they scout in their areas or when they go to the All-Star Games, Senior Bowl in that process. How are your interviews and what you're looking for different from what those guys are already gathering that they can tell you perspective on? This is his background. This is what he's done. Yeah, no, that's that's good. So those get, they're really getting a lot of personal information, digging in. When we get them and as coaches, we're really digging as deep as we can. How, what's your football intelligence? You know, how much do you know? What have you been taught? What's, you know, be able to dig into the system that they've been in, the coaching that they've received. You know, get them to kind of explain to us what they've been taught. Then we can try to take moments to explain to them what we would teach them and how mm -hmm. we would do things and can they spit that back to us in a short amount of time has there been in the past not asking you to name names but a guy who y you liked or something but because of the interview he really ascended or positioned himself much higher on your radar because of what you learned even in that brief conversation that you were able to have with how he can retain information how he sees the game there's no doubt I mean it's like Matt said even though it's only 15 minutes you get a great first impression and you can't just rely on that, but it is a piece, and um, it is a piece of the puzzle. And there are instances, Lara, where both ways, where it's elevated mm -hmm. him, and then there's other instances where it's brought down. Mm. You know, he could, mm -hmm. he didn't really process that that quickly. He didn't really respond to that the way you know, because you get you do all these guys back to back to back, so you can compare. Yeah. But the big thing that you have to make sure that you do is you can't over do any one point you got to give a guy a chance it's a long process that's what Chris and Ed and the guys do so well and then we as coaches just come in and play a little piece you talk this week how the Colts have a really good team a mature team um, a lot of guys that are in their primes and you've, you've got this window knowing that does that change the offseason approach the strategy knowing you've, you've got this window and the NFL they there's these fleeting moments, and it's really hard to put a good team together. It's even harder to keep a good team together. Yeah, no, it, it's you have a sense of urgency. You have a sense of urgency, but you can't ever lose poise and just say, um, 
hey, we're going to go crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we heard Mr. Ursay say to Colts fans, I think this got us all excited. Hey, it's got to be, we got to get all our chips in. But what does that mean? Does that mean that we just go crazy and, and spend in free agent? It might mean that we do something like that. It might mean, does that mean that you do something in the draft that's that's extremely sure. oh, but might but there's a lot of different things that that could mean right and so really that's chris's job my job mr ursay with his leadership you know what what are the ways that we're going to go all of our chips in you know to put forth the best team here you know and still have a chance you know because every move has a cost right mm -hmm. every move has a cost and you don't want to cripple yourself for the long term either Part of your offseason has been spent in building your coaching staff with the hire of Gus Bradley as defensive coordinator and then hiring some assistants in addition to that move as well. In the time that you and Gus have been able to work together, time you've been in the building, first of all, actually, I'm going to backtrack, what really drew you yeah. to Gus Bradley? And then what's the dynamic been like? Well, I mean, Gus comes from a system that is well known in this in this league, you know, that that Seattle cover three stuff, but he put his own spin on it, his own twist, and has had a lot of success with it. Um, the other thing that drew me to Gus was I, I know what kind of a leader he is. You know, Philip Rivers was with him for a long time. I'd hear about him all. Nick Sirianni was with him for a long time in San Diego. So I know the kind of leader and the kind of person he is, a great cultural fit. And I just think that he has a unique energy about him. And I think you guys, you know, if you haven't felt that yet, you're going to feel it. He's got this unique energy about him. And, um, the players that he's coached, you know, the guys that I've talked to, you know, played for him. They all say that they all say that same thing about him, that he just brings this brings great energy to the defense. And so I'm looking forward to his leadership. One thing I learned from him when we had a chance to sit down with him for the podcast, and you can go back and listen to that conversation if you haven't already. I asked him about how having experience as both a head coach and a coordinator helps him when you're coming in and you're working with another head coach and understanding what all the head coach is handling in his role, and he's able to hone in on that defensive coordinator role. And he says, my job is to make sure I'm reiterating the coach's message, and I understand the message he's trying to deliver, and then I'm making sure that that's resonating with my guys. What's your reaction when you hear something like that? Yeah, I mean, he's a pro, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that is partly because he has been a head coach, yeah. and he knows how important that is. And so you know, it's funny, selfishly I say that kiddingly, but – one of the other things that really made me want to go towards Gus as far as hiring him as a coordinator is his experience as a head coach can help me continue to grow, right? I mean, it's someone that – a colleague, a confidant that I can have, those those tough moments in your head coaching decisions. Certainly that's Chris Bauer and I kind of, you know, going through all that stuff. But Gus, the kind of person he is, I think he'll help me uh, be better as well. Coach, you talked a ton yesterday about the quarterback situation and Carson Wentz. So, I mean, that's that's all been chronicled. So we're going to spend the rest of our time with you talking about other pieces of the offense in this team. With that, Michael Pittman Jr. goes over 1,000 yards, took a nice step in year number two, playmaker for you on offense. Outside of him, how do you gauge the rest of the playmakers you have at wide receiver? I know you like those guys. And you said yesterday that you think at least one of those guys can really step up and emerge and be a legitimate force for you next season. That that's we're counting on that, and I and I don't believe that's like you know ill-founded confidence. We've seen enough to think that hey, with with the right opportunity, those guys can grow. But obviously, as you said, Pitt is he had a monster year last year, and I think he's just a very driven guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he'll continue to get better. Um, I, I think where he'll continue to get better is in his route running. He's already good, but I think there's room for an improvement there. Um, you know, and then Paris, right? I mean, we all know we've, you know, all, it's heartbreaking, you know, yeah. the injuries he's suffered. But uh, th this is really needs to be a breakout year for Paris, right? We know he has the, we know he has the skill set, the mindset, everything that we need for him to be, you know, a good receiver. So uh, a good number two receiver for us. And so that's really what we're counting on. And then, as you said, let's get one of these young guys to really emerge. And then you got Naheem out of the backfield and, and all the things that we do with him. And then we'll see how the tight end piece uh, comes mm -hmm. together as, as the next couple weeks go on here. Last one for me, Coach, and I know this kind of got lost in all of the news and everything that was talked about at the end of the season, but I think it's really important. I think you would obviously agree uh, the Colts are going to have some sort of an off-season workout program this year, OTAs, uh, mini camps, veteran mini camps. Um, why do you think it's important to get back to that? And then, if anything, what do you think you missed by compromising or condensing that part of the off-season last year? I just think it's so critical. I mean, I even go, <clears throat> excuse me, I even go back to, the, you know, my playing days in the offseason, what we did 
how much we were in there, how much we were working to continue to get better. So right. there's nothing like, you know, getting on the field with your teammates. You know, it doesn't have to all be full speed stuff. Full speed stuff. You can do walkthrough stuff. You can do individual stuff. The guys can get together. But just to get in there, we have a new defensive staff. So exactly. For, so, so for them to be able to get with our defensive players, install our new system, right? And then, you know, we need to take that next step. For me, Matt, what I'm most excited about the offseason, to fine-tune the passing game. Yes. You know, all those yeah. reps, all those seven-on-seven, seven, all those one-on-one, -on -one, all those routes on air that we can get to fine-tune the passing game, uh, I think are really important. You touched on teammates. One of your teammates is just a couple tables away. I spent some time, spent some time with Steve Ka T Jeez, Steve Easy Tasker, for you to say. right? I spent some time <laughs> with Steve Tasker earlier, who's part of the Bills radio coverage and all of their TV broadcasts, talking about your days in Buffalo. He was just reflecting on so many of those great times, and he was telling me about some really competitive trivial pursuit battles <laughs> that you would have. And he said that you guys going for the it pies, was, right? It was going for yeah, the pies. and it was the the guys versus the gals. They would bring all of the wives over and be the teammates versus their wives. And he said that these would get pretty pretty competitive and he said that Linda's was one of the toughest competitors, Linda Reich, <laughs> in uh, trivial pursuit and you guys may have tried to a time or two pull one over on uh, on Linda maybe telling her she didn't get an answer right when in fact that she did we we did try to pull a couple of the wives would usually beat us you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was always close it was always close those are great times those are those are good memories I'm glad you brought that up uh, those husband and husbands versus the wives <laughs> trivial pursuit uh, they got to be pretty intense I mean you you can't even imagine how intense those things would go but a lot of fun. That's part of the great thing about this game, you know, and the team. It brings everybody together. It's not just about the on-the-field stuff. That's the other thing that OTAs got does. It gets kind of guys here together, yeah. and you build that chemistry. And you and, and Larry, just as you brought up, I mean, it's 30 years later, and Steve still and I, we're, we're still talking about those moments. Yeah. Um, so that, that's important stuff. Coach, I know the Combine's incredibly busy for you. Um, appreciate the time. I mean, we've been sitting here talking for 20 minutes, so I can't thank you enough. Um, as we close out, just draining. How, how draining is the combine for you as you go from here to there and, and try to put everything to, into perspective? Well, it's interesting. It, it's long hours, could be draining, but really it's new energy, right? I mean, yeah. you're, you, and what energizes you is, is the idea of building your team, of bringing in new talent. This is that, you know, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword now, right? You think because you get so close to the team that you had last year every one of those players mm -hmm. but yet you know there's a lot of turnover year to year we're going to draft guys we're going to sign you know free agents so the team's going to change so in one respect you're going to lose some guys but you're going to gain some guys so you gain energy by that you look forward to what you're doing as coaches we kind of re-energize get you know recommit to what we're doing how are we going to get better in certain areas so um that, that's what this time is all about absolutely coach you're the best thank you so much thanks matt thanks larry